Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice today from the Everyday Counts community space. Um, as you can see, I don't have any props here, but if you need some blocks, a pillow, a blanket, a chair, please gather what you need. I'm also only making suggestions. So move freely, rest freely, pause, skip ahead. This is your practice, your time on the mat. So let's begin by making ourselves comfortable. That might mean lying down. It might be finding a comfortable supported upright seat. It might be changing position a few times as we begin to center. So make your way into that comfortable starting position. Perhaps close your eyes and breathing through your nose if you can. When you close your eyes, your awareness begins to draw inward, starting to notice perhaps how you're feeling in your mind, in your emotions, in your body. As if you've just arrived here in the present moment and there's some open curiosity about about what this present moment is like. And perhaps bringing some awareness to the movement of your breath. Can you soften your belly and invite the in-breath to land deep, expanding your abdomen, your waist, your low back? And simply let go of the exhale, let it roll out freely, slowly. And then again, the inhale is sort of an invitation to land soft and deep. And the exhale and allowing, allowing that breath to lead soft and slow. And that soft, deep inhale. softer, slower exhale. And you're still listening to your body's thoughts. You're listening with this awareness of even your thought thoughts even your emotional state. Just allowing everything to rest here in the present moment, this restful, curious awareness. As we offer three or four more breaths, soft and deep. And soft and slow. So here we are now, perhaps with your eyes still closed and only if it suits you, bring a hand to rest on your belly and one to rest on your chest. And offer yourself some sweetness here, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. Now let's release our hands and open our eyes. We are going to bring some movement to the upper body. So if you need to change um, position, please feel free. If you're lying down, perhaps sit up. If you've been sitting, maybe give your legs a shake and then find the same or a different seated position. Some folks even like to come with kneeling hips off of heels just because that's more comfortable and I'll be in that position as it's the most accessible one. Yeah, so... Let's close our eyes again. You can peek whenever you need to. I'm locating the tip of my nose. And I'm gonna draw a big circle with my nose. So I might drop the chin to the chest, pointing the nose down. 
and then slowly turn over my right shoulder, so sweeping that nose as far as it's gonna go in one direction, and then slowly up, tipping the head back with control, and turning that nose to the opposite direction, and then circling down, chin to chest again, and curving the space with the nose leading twice more in this direction. How big a circle can you draw here while still comfortable, while still moving with ease? And then we'll change the direction of the circle. The shoulders remain nice and quiet. The rest of the spine is still upright. I'm just exploring mobility in the head and neck here. Two more circles in this direction. And then we'll meet with the chin to the chest. We'll take a breath here, breathing into the back of the neck. And then slowly bring your head back upright. Now we're gonna do a little bit of uh, mobility here in the shoulders. So I've turned to my side so you can see my hand and arm really well. You'll notice my palm is facing in and my thumb is pointing forward and I'm spreading my fingers nice and wide. Yeah. So let's move together. We're gonna to reach those fingertips away from us forward. And reaching as far overhead as is comfortable. I'm gonna notice my hand here as I reach up overhead. I'm gonna turn the palm to face forward and then out. I'm gonna keep reaching the arm behind as far as it'll go without twisting the spine. And my hand is gonna keep turning around. It's gonna keep turning so that once it's down by my side again, the palm is facing out and the thumb is pointed back. It's okay if you didn't get there. We're gonna try it again. So we're gonna back up, we're gonna backtrack, we're gonna reach back. And it's almost like we're kind of unraveling the shoulder as we reach the arm overhead. It keeps kind of turning till it's facing in. The arm is overhead and forward again. Let's try that two more times in this direction. So again, palm facing in, we're reaching forward, we're reaching up. Palm faces forward and then out, and it's gonna just keep turning in that direction as we reach the arm behind us. Keep turning, keep turning. Palm is facing out, thumb behind. We're gonna resist rotating through the torso. I know I'm peeking at you a bit here as we reach back and slowly kind of unravel that arm. Yeah. So probably starting to feel some stretch and engagement here through the arm. Let's do one more. So the palm is facing in, but then it's gonna face forward, it's gonna face out in that direction, it's gonna keep turning as we reach behind. And reach back and reverse that journey. The palm faces in at the top, stays that way as we reach forward. Ooh. So let's take a moment here, rest the hands on the lap, maybe even close your eyes and notice how one arm feels relative to the other. might feel very different after that little bit of movement. So let's switch sides. So it's probably your left arm here, but it could just be the other one. Uh, palm is facing down, thumb facing forward. We're really spreading the fingers and reaching those fingertips right out of the shoulder joint. We're gonna reach forward and up. Once we get to the top, we're turning the palm to face forward and then out. So we're gonna keep rotating in that direction as we reach the arm behind. Till the palm faces out at your waist, thumb back. Then we're gonna reverse, reach back. And slowly unravel here until palm faces in at the top, reaching forward again. Two more. There can be a comfortable deep belly breath here. And if you need to, as usual, close your eyes and see if you can find that movement. Final one here as we reach up. Palm forward, palm out. Keep rotating in that direction as we reach behind. There's going to be some stretch here. And back, unraveling as we 
the arm reaches over and forward. Again, we'll rest hands to the lap and notice how we feel. Okay, well, let's meet with our legs out in front, kind of familiar movements here as we lean into the hands, pointing and flexing through the feet. And then circling from the ankles. And changing direction, probably some cricks and cracks here, that's okay. And we'll give that a little shake. Uh, we are going to lean into the hands again with the feet wide. And we'll rock both knees to one side. And then the other. So familiar stuff here for most of us. And pushing into those heels as we rock. So let's add our little twist here as we were resisting rotation before and now we're going to totally surrender to rotation. If the knees are falling to the left, we're leaning into the left hand, sweeping the right arm around, around, till we're reaching behind. Take a big breath in, reach a little further. And then slowly back. And the knees come to center as they fall to the right. It's that left arm that's sweeping off the mat and around. Another in breath to reach a little further. And slowly back. Let's do this once more in either direction. And the knee is falling to the left, sweeping the right arm around. Remember the idea of spreading the fingers, reaching the fingers away from the shoulders. Pressing down into that bottom hand and returning. Other side. Reach. And sweeping back. Excellent. Okay, so from here, let's take a moment. We can rest our arms on our legs. We're looking for that upright seated posture just to notice how it feels to be on those sitting bones, to be finding a comfortable upright seat. If you need to hold on to the knees, that's okay. I wanted to play a little bit with reaching um, from this position. So we're looking for that upright posture. You saw the side view. If we do need to lean into the hands or lean into one hand, that's fine. I'm just gonna play a little bit. We've already done some reaching through the arms, done a little bit of twisting, so let's try it again. So again, you can bring one hand down by your side. I'm just gonna reach the other arm up. And then back down, just to see how that feels. Again, we can reach up. And maybe we'll side bend a little bit. And down. I'll try that one more time. We're gonna reach up and side bend. Now let's reach the arm out to the side. And can we reach behind? A little bit of twist. This is where you could bring your hand to your legs. You can twist. And then back. Great. Now we'll try that one more time. So we're still reaching through that same arm up and over. And up to the side. Twist. And again, I'll take a moment here to rest. You can rest into the hands if you need to. You can rock the knees. Because it does take a certain amount of core strength to simply sit upright, right? That idea of being upright. So let's try again with the other hand. So we might lean into one hand as we reach that opposite arm. So as I just bring my hand to my shoulder just as a beginning, you can reach up through there. And back down. And reach up. And we're side bending. And back to 
center and down. Final, well, two more here. We're going to reach up. We're going to reach over. Around to the side. And then maybe we bring those hands to the legs as we reach behind us, kind of following with the gaze. And forward again. Down. Let's try that one more time. We're reaching up and over. And the arm reaches to the side, and maybe the other hand to those legs as we reach behind. Follow with the gaze. And we're back. And take a moment here to rest, or even to lean into the hands and rock those knees. It is time to make our way into tabletop hands and knees position. So take your time getting there. Know that tender knees are very much helped by a blanket under those knees or a second mat. Yeah. So noticing how the hands feel here, you can always add um, resting on the tops of fists or fingertips or even on forearms here. You could place some pillows under those forearms if you wanted a more of a tabletop position. Let's begin with some cat-cow. So we're locating that tailbone, tucking it under. As we start to round through the spine, can you push the ground away, make a little space between those shoulder blades? And then turn the tailbone up. And there's our slow arch. Shrug the shoulder blades together, let the heart melt. Let's do that a few more times. You can lead with the tailbone. Maybe closing your eyes, just noticing how you feel. You might be noticing your thoughts, your feelings, or sensations in the body. Those are all your inner experiences here. So kind of just noticing with open curiosity what's coming up for us. Once more, either direction. As we return to our neutral spine, we might need to shake out one hand and then the other. And then we are going to start to explore some hip mobility by rocking the hips from side to side. And then turning that into a circle. We're going to rock the hips to one side. We're going to circle them back towards the heel and rock to the other side. Weight shifts onto the hands as the hips circle forward. Let's circle a couple more times in this direction. Push the ground away when the weight shifts forward. And then we'll change the direction. Can we lean into those hips? Once more, lovely circular journey for those hips, finding that stretch. And then we'll meet in a child pose. You can widen your knees if you want as you drop your hips towards your heels. You could walk your arms forward, rest your forehead between, or you could cross the hands to rest the forehead there. But please support yourself here as you perhaps close your eyes, find that soft belly in breath. And soft or slower out breath. One more big breath in and out. So we'll return to our tabletop position. And I wanted to come back to that idea of reaching and 
of a little bit of twist or rotation. So from our tabletop position, we're going to hover that right hand and then reach it out in front of us, where it's like we're trying to reach that arm overhead. Uh, pressing into the opposite hand. We're going to turn that right palm to face out. We're going to slowly sweep it up towards the ceiling. We're kind of stacking the shoulder here, turning the chest to the side wall. You can follow gazing at your fingertips. And then we'll bring the arm back in front and put the hand down. Let's try with the other side. So we're pressing into that right hand, lifting the left hand, reach the left arm in front, like you're reaching it overhead. We're gonna turn the palm to face out. We're gonna press down into the bottom hand as we reach the top arm up. Reach and press. And sweep the arm forward. You're gazing down at your mat again and putting the hand down. You can shake out the hands. Let's try that one more time. So first we lift the right hand, we reach it in front. We turn the palm to face out, we're going to reach it up. Press down to reach up, like you're stacking the shoulders, you're gazing at the top hand. And then forward again, squaring those shoulders facing the mat, putting your hand down. We'll try the other side. Lifting the left hand, reach it out in front, reach. Start pressing into that right hand as you turn the left palm to face out. And then press down to reach up like you're gazing at the ceiling, turning the chest to the side wall. And then the arm sweeps forward. We're gazing at the mat, putting our hand down. Let's widen the knees. Let's press back into child pose. And you can circle those wrists if you need to. And a couple big breaths in here. And one more. Great. Let's come back to tabletop and then we'll come to kneeling. Ah, so here we are kneeling. I know we've been doing a lot um, of kind of shoulder mobility, reaching and twisting activities and I'm going to keep shifting it in, it in our relationship to gravity and this will be one of them. So we are going to come um, to kneeling and we're going to bring one foot forward. Yeah. And uh, we're getting a nice upright posture here. If you have a wall or a chair and that allows you to feel more comfortable, please feel free. Um, we're going to shift forward and back a few times just to know that we've got some wiggle room here, that we're not sort of stuck in this position. And I think we've done this before in class. We're kind of pulling ourselves forward, pulling ourselves back, and pulling back through the front foot as we come forward going forward through the back thigh as we come back up. The idea is that we're trying to stay fairly upright in the pelvis and torso, so we find a nice stretch to the back leg. Awesome. We'll do one more here. And then bringing my left hand to my left thigh, or hand to the front leg, we're going to reach the opposite arm up. So there's that reach up. We could side bend a little bit towards the left or towards the side with the front leg, sending the opposite hip in the opposite direction. And then we're coming back upright. We'll try that a couple more times. We're reaching up or side bending towards that front leg. And back upright. Got that front foot really rooted, hand to the thigh. And the arm has been up for quite some time. We're gonna bring it forward and reach it out to the side. We're gonna reach it behind us and you can just guide with the other hand 
This is going to feel a little bit different because this is a nice open belly twist. Reach behind and sweep the arm forward again. And we're going to switch. So we're going to bring the hand to the thigh and reach the other arm forward. And as we reach it out and behind, this twist is going to feel a little bit different. To do that once more either side. So we're reaching the arm forward and this is the one opposite to the front leg out to the side. So as we reach the arm behind us we're thinking about letting the chest follow the arm. So the arm's not sort of reaching behind, it's the chest that's turning to the side wall. And we're going to sweep the arm forward again and we're going to switch hand to thigh and reach the other arm forward to the side. And again, as I reach this arm behind me, I'm thinking about turning the chest. And then slowly back. Okay, so using any support you have uh, to bring the front leg to meet the back. Take a moment here, maybe bring your hands to your belly. Maybe this was a lot of new movement, so let's close our eyes. Just let everything settle. Soft belly breath in, soft or slower breath out. One more. And as you open your eyes, let's do it all again on the other side. So we're bringing the other foot forward. Again, we can use the support of a wall or a chair um, to give us more balance here. Once we're steady, we could shift the hips forward and back a little bit, hand to the thigh if you want to, even widen your base, take that right foot a little bit more to the right, front foot to the edge of the mat. And I think about pulling back through the front foot as I come forward, pulling forward through the back thigh as I come back upright. I'm just spending a little bit of time trying to keep that pelvis fairly neutral. Another way to say that is drawing the tailbone down, belly in, so that this stretch is really happening. That thigh is reaching behind the body. We'll do about three more here. We've got some wiggle room here. Now we're going to bring the same hand to the same front thigh. We're reaching the other arm up. We've done a lot of reaching up today. We're going to send the hip over to the opposite direction that we're side bending in. And slowly back upright. We'll do that a couple more times. Reaching long as you press down through the knee, sending that hip in the opposite direction. And back upright. Do one more. And we're upright. So now we're going to add that little bit of rotation. So again, just getting nice and stable here. We're reaching that arm forward, the one that was reaching overhead. I'm going to sweep it out to the side. So rather than trying to pull the arm behind us, we're thinking about turning the belly and chest in that direction. And then slowly back. And I know these seem like simple movements, but to balance on one knee and one foot here, that's the challenge as well. Yeah. So we'll switch hands. We're going to bring that hand across the body to the thigh, reaching the other arm out. Again, as we reach the arm behind us, we're turning the chest as well. And then slowly back. Let's switch sides. So again, this arm in front, out to the side, getting nice and rooted through that front foot with the opposite hand, turning the chest to the side wall with the movement of the arm. And slowly back. Yeah. Let's replace that hand to the front thigh for support, other arm out to the side. And of course, we're not gonna twist as far in this direction as we turn chest to side wall as we reach behind us. And we're going to meet back at center. And again, 
We can bring our leg in and we can rest here. Maybe closing your eyes, maybe hands to the belly to reconnect with that relaxation breath pattern. Soft, deep in breath. And soft or slower out breath. Couple more. As you open your eyes, we're gonna come back to hands and knees and we're gonna do a little bit of hip rotation here, which will be kind of challenging. And then we'll come to standing and kind of use that newfound strength in the hips to move a little bit from side to side. Um, so we are coming back to our hands and knees position. And so you can adjust your hands as need be. And notice my front leg. So I'm lifting the foot and kind of flexing the foot, pulling the heel towards the butt. So kind of active here in the back of the leg. I'm gonna hover that right knee off the mat, just the tiniest bit, draw the knee forward, out to the side, and behind, still pulling heel to the butt, I'm gonna bring it forward. This can be a challenging movement, but let's give it a try. We're gonna do two more in this direction. Out to the side, behind, and down. And one more, out to the side, and down. Let's take a moment here, rock the hips, shake out the hands. And then we'll change the direction, same leg. So again, I'm pulling the heel towards the butt as I flex the foot, lifting the knee. This time I'm gonna reach back, out to the side, slightly in towards the belly, and two more times. Keep pulling the heel to the butt. The rest of the body is staying nice and quiet. One more. It's okay if these are small movements, you know how I exaggerate so you can see them. I'm gonna put that knee down. Let's press into a child pose. You could circle the wrists here, you could rock the hips, you could close your eyes and breathe deeply, two breaths. Now let's return and do it all again on the other side. And so opposite leg here, I'm flexing the foot as I lift the foot off the mat, the knee is on the mat, I'm pulling my heel to my butt. So quite active leg here, pressing down into those hands, strong shoulders. I'm gonna lift the knee a little bit, draw the knee forward, sweep it out to the side and behind and down again. The rest of the body is resisting any shifting here. So as you lift the leg behind, we're trying not to arch in the low back. We're thinking about drawing the belly in. We'll do one more in this direction. And then down. Let's take a moment here if you need to rock the hips or shake out the hands before we change the direction of the circle. Holy hips, we're waking them up. So again, we're flexing the foot, pulling the heel to the butt, nice and active. We're gonna lift the knee. We're gonna shift the leg behind. This is where we're avoiding that arch in the low back. We're gonna sweep the leg out to the side and forward and down and keep going two more. It's attempting to really shift all of your weight into the other hip. See if we can keep that hip over the knee. So bring that knee in. Let's put our foot down, our knee down, rock the hips. And press into one more child pose and let's take those arms nice and long in front of us if we can, kind of stretch into this, drop the hips towards the heels. Two more breaths. Great, so walk those hands under you. We're gonna move from tabletop to standing. So however you need to get there, use a wall, use a chair, take a few steps until you find yourself upright. Yeah, so we're finding 
our mountain pose here, which is a comfortable upright posture. Your feet feel supportive under you. There's no perfect width here. Just, just a com comfortable upright posture. Maybe the inhale is gonna invite you to grow nice and tall. The exhale invites the shoulders to soften away from the ears. One more breath like that. Great. So before we get uh, moving on our feet, let's bring some awareness down to our feet. We're gonna lift and spread the toes, lower them down. Just do that a few times. The weight's gonna start shifting back as you lift and spread the toes. And it's starting to engage the arches of the feet. Again, lifting and spreading the toes, lowering them down. We're gonna rock onto the outer edges of the feet, lifting the inner edges. Press into the inner edges, lifting the outer edges. I know that's kind of hard to see with my big black socks there, the bottom of the screen, but we're pressing down into the inner edges, lifting the outer edges of the feet. Pressing down into the outer edges, lifting the inner edges back and forth a few times. I start to feel this in the feet right away. The feet have a lot to say about this. It's giving us movement options of how we can bring awareness to our feet and find extra stability in different positions. Okay, so we'll let that one go. You can walk the feet just so they feel nice and loose. Final piece here, and I like to do this before most of my standing poses. Um, is to bring the hands to the thighs as you bend your knees and then to start circling the knees. So we're being nice and soft through the ankles so the ankles and the feet can receive some of this as well as the knees. You might notice that lovely stretch in the calves as the knees shift over the toes. We're gonna change direction. I'm pressing into those thighs so you feel totally supported. And if your knees aren't happy going side to side, see how small a circle you can go and still be comfortable. And it might be that we're simply bending and straightening the legs, exploring that calf stretch, that ankle mobility. But again, maybe there's this more lateral movement you can find here. Two more circles. I know we've taken a while to get to this upright posture, so let's find it. Let's find our mountain pose. Walk the feet, give yourself a shake. Hopefully feeling fairly aware of your lower legs now. Yeah. So we're going to take a wide-legged stance, which means just stepping as wide as feels stable and comfortable, and you can adjust. You can also do this a bit closer to a wall, if you just like to know there's a wall close behind you. You could even do this with a chair in front of you. So again, great to have extra props for support around you. So my feet are wide and we can adjust once we're moving. I could turn my feet a little bit out maybe. And now we're kind of shifting the weight. So I'm gonna use my hand on my thigh to really support me here. I'm bending into that knee, letting the knee track over the toes, pushing that foot away into the mat as I come back to center. And then I'm letting the weight shift onto the other foot. We're gonna go side to side for a bit here maybe going a little deeper each time, maybe even coming onto a forearm. It's tempting to let that opposite or that same foot heel lift, and you can, um, kind of just playing here, seeing how much long you can keep the heel on the mat. You can kind of shift the weight back or bring your hands to the floor. So there's no sort of right way or wrong way to do this. We're kind of experimenting. If you do need the floor for more support, if you need to adjust the angle of the feet or the knees, you notice that I could even turn the toes up of the opposite foot, maybe. So keep it nice and low, keep it slow. It's okay if heels lift. Yeah. And you can keep it really high as well. You can stay right here. We don't need to get so low. Do a few more though. This builds lots of strength and flexibility into those hips, into the ankles. Notice that as the knee tracks over the toes, you're probably feeling some resistance here through the ankle or through the shin or calf. I'm just playing with this a few more times, just exploring in your own way. 
My favorite part is the strength I feel as I'm coming up and I push that foot into the mat and I feel all of that extra strength. And I'm pushing off the ground. Feeling the strength through the hip and through the legs. Appreciate how long we've been at this. Let's do a couple more. Push the floor away. And you could be going a lot slower than me. That's fine. Great. Now let's meet in the middle here. Yeah, we can bring the feet parallel. We are going to move into a forward fold to slow down our breathing, to slow down our heart rate. Um, and in the past, I've recommended you could forward fold onto a chair. Um, another place to start is with bent knees, hands to thighs. Especially if you have higher low blood pressure, you want to keep your head in line with your heart. This could be a resting place. Or you go a little lower, you could bring forearms to thighs. Again, you could keep head in line with the heart. Or you could start to let your head hang, give your head a little shake. If you want to, you could reach for the floor. Give your shoulders a little shrug, give your head a little shake again. We'll be here for three or four breaths, just wherever you need to be here. So again, if you need to be a little higher, that's great. We're still going to slow down the breathing. Let go of some tension. And stretch. A couple more breaths. So to come out of this pose, let's bring those hands back to the thighs. Let's push into the thighs as we come upright. Yeah. Heel toe, heel toe, those feet back in and stand in our mountain pose for a few more breaths. Okay, so from here we are going to lie down on our back. It's not quite time for final relaxation, but we're well on our way. So you can gather the things you need now or later because you have a pause button. So lucky. Great, so once you're on your back, now let's come back to that windshield wiper movement for the legs. We're taking those feet nice and wide, knees bent, allowing both knees to fall to one side and then to the other. I'll do that a couple times, just letting the body be heavy and the movements be soft. Well, so from here, we are gonna to return to that reaching movement through the arm and that little bit of rotation. So let's roll over to one side. And as you do, you're gonna notice your hips are stacked, your legs are stacked, so the knees are right in front of the hips, and then your arms are stacked as well. Now you could put a blanket under your head. You are probably gonna notice your head is at a slightly uncomfortable angle, but unless there's distinctly pain from here, we are gonna start moving the head, so it's not gonna be as, as uncomfortable soon. Great. So we're gonna reach the arm up. There's that reach of the arm. We're gonna gently squeeze our thighs together or squeeze our knees together. As we reach the arm behind us, we're turning the chest to the ceiling. Great, and then we'll reach the arm back up and over, hand to hand. The reason we're squeezing our thighs together is to resist the top hip shifting back and the thighs separating. We're gonna do that in a moment, but let's do this a couple more times. We're gonna reach the top arm up. We're gonna squeeze the thighs together to keep those hips stacked. As we reach the arm behind us, we're gonna feel some stretch, some engagement. And then slowly bring it back. Yeah, let's try that one more time. Reach the arm up, squeeze those thighs together as we reach across the body. Following with the gaze, and then bringing the hand back. Okay, so now we're gonna become really soft in the body. There's no squeezing of the thighs together at this point. And we're gonna use the arm a little bit different. 
So we're going to sweep the arm overhead. It can even sort of drift along the floor here. And then as we reach the arm behind us, we're letting that top hip shift back. Let the thighs separate. Turn the belly and chest to the ceiling. And then slowly keep sweeping that arm around and down until the hand comes to the hand. I'm going to move a little forward so I don't hit the wall here. So again, we're sweeping the arm overhead. It can draw a line along the floor. We're going to let the thighs separate, the hip, top hip shift back as we reach that hand behind us and around. Let's do that one more time in this direction. Letting the head and neck turn, maybe following the hand with your gaze. And then we'll change the direction of the circle, reach the arm down the body and across, twisting easily, turning belly and chest to the ceiling, and then reaching back across. We'll do two more. You notice I'm very relaxed in my body now. Everything can move freely. We're letting the head and neck turn and follow the hand one more time. We're resting hand to hand for a breath. And then you can roll back onto your back. And we'll take a moment to rest here. You might hug the knees to the belly if that feels good for you. Or you might return to rocking the knees from side to side. And now we'll find our way into this movement on the other side. So again, I'm bringing those knees directly in front of the hips. I'm stacking the hips, stacking the hands and the shoulders. The head is at an unfortunate angle. Let's float the top arm up. We're going to squeeze the thighs together as we reach the arm behind us, turning belly, well, turning chest to the wall, to the ceiling. And then we're reaching the arm back across. We'll squeeze to those thighs here. We'll do that two more times. Reach up. So we're basically resisting rotation through the pelvis as we squeeze those thighs together, looking for stretch and engagement here, and then reaching back across the body. Notice how I'm spreading my fingers wide, reaching my fingers away from my shoulder. So I squeeze the thighs together and rotate through the rib cage. And then slowly back. And this is where we're going to become very soft. So we're no longer going to squeeze the thighs together. We're going to sweep the arm overhead. It can draw a little line on the floor as far as it can. Letting the thighs separate, the top hip shift back. Almost the whole back can be on the mat now as we turn belly and chest to the ceiling, sweeping the arm back down and around. Back to that side lying. Two more in this direction. Again, you can reach the fingertips away from you. You're trying to reach out of that shoulder joint, and letting the whole body receive this little bit of stretch and movement. Maybe even closing your eyes here and notice what you notice. We're changing the direction of the circle. Letting everything be soft, reach those fingertips away. Let your head and neck turn, maybe even letting your eyes sort of follow the fingers. One more. Great, take a moment here. And then we'll roll onto our back. So it is time for final relaxation. So this is where you might notice you want a sweater or a pillow, even some pillows under your knees. If the legs aren't comfortable lying flat, you're welcome to take the feet wide, knees bent, turn the toes in, and then rest your thighs or knees against each other or legs long or any other comfortable position. You might want to turn the palms up, bring the arms away from the side body. You might want to rest those hands somewhere on your body. 
perhaps closing your eyes as you continue to make yourself more and more comfortable. Closing your eyes, breathing through your nose if you can. Let's begin to receive the gift of gravity. Notice that you are fully supported by the floor beneath you, completely held by gravity so you will not float away. There is a quality of stillness and connection wherever your body touches the floor. Let's feel that stillness and connection at the back of the head. That gentle pressure against the back of the head that tells you there is support. Let your head soften and settle. Let your whole face begin to soften and settle. And now let's notice wherever our arms and hands touch down, whether that's on the mat or on your belly for those hands. But again, we're looking for that quality of stillness, connection, the quiet, supported arms and hands, letting go. Let's begin to notice where the back and the buttocks touch down, feeling the back of the torso fully supported. And this feeling of stillness and connection. And the quiet of your whole torso even as you feel the movement of the breath. So let's feel the legs and feet fully supported. Feeling the quiet of your legs and feet. The stillness and connection that gravity brings. We're noticing both legs and feet fully supported. The whole torso fully supported. Both arms and hands fully.
fully supported. The head and neck fully supported. The whole body fully supported. The whole body at rest. Soft, deep in breath. Soft or slower out breath. And the abdomen gently rising and falling. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Let's just rest here for a couple more minutes. Feeling the belly rise and fall. Feeling your whole body fully supported. And again, the mind may wander. It's okay. Come back. Feel the whole body supported. Feel the gentle rhythm of your own breath. If you feel a great need to stay right where you are, please feel free. If you do feel like completing the practice here with me, perhaps wiggle your fingers and toes, perhaps turn your head from side to side. You might yawn, you might stretch. And then perhaps roll yourself over to one side, resting your head on your arm. And then slowly make your way back to a comfortable upright seat. Perhaps once more closing your eyes. And resting a hand to the belly, a hand to the chest. And you could do this reclined as well. 
Let's return to that sweetness we offered ourselves at the beginning of the practice, that kind word, that prayer, that affirmation just for you. slowly releasing your hands, perhaps opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program, and hopefully I'll be seeing you all again soon. Bye.